Kia ora, and welcome to a lesson on how to use a sign rule with me, Mr. Wilson. The sign rule and the cosine rule both relate to any shape triangle, not just right angle triangles, but any shape triangle. And within those triangles, we label up our sides, lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, and the angles which are opposite those sides are given the capitals. So capital A, capital B, and capital C. So opposite side to angle, like so. The sine rule is written as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is also equal to C over sine C. All that means is a side divided by sine of the opposite angle will give you the same answer as one of the other sides divided by sine of that opposite angle. This is really useful for when you have unknown side lengths and unknown angles when you have two sides and two angles. So let's have a look at it. First of all, we're going to have a look at a question where we've got an unknown side. So first things first, label up your diagram. Always start off by labeling up your diagram. So I like to label my unknown here, A, which means that the angle that is opposite is capital A. My other side I call B, which means the angle opposite that is capital B. You don't need C and sine C for this. You only need two pairs of opposite sides and angles. Okay. So using my formula, a over sine a equals b over sine b, it's just a case of simple substitution. So a is x, capital A is 47, lowercase b is 8.2, capital B is 103. Now I have it in my formula, it's a case of rearranging this formula to get x by itself so I can solve it. So because x is divided by sine 47, I need to get rid of that dividing by sine 47 by doing the opposite of dividing by sine 47, which is multiplying by sine 47. So x is equal to 8.2 over sine 103 multiplied by sine 47, which gives you an answer of 6.15 meters. Okay, do you think you got it? Just pause the video and have a go at the question displayed on your screen now. Hopefully you've had a good go at that question, so let's have a look at it. So I like to label my unknown side A, which makes the angle opposite capital A, the other side B, angle opposite capital B. Put into your formula. A is X, Sine A is going to be sine 45, which is equal to B, which is 12, over sine of the opposite angle, 75. To get X by itself, you multiply it up by sine 45, like so, to give you an answer for X at 8.78 centimetres. Did you get it? Hopefully you did. Let's have a look at another question where it's slightly different. So just pause the video and see if you can work this one out. It takes a bit more thinking, this one. Okay, hopefully you worked out what you're supposed to do here. So this one is slightly different because if you notice, the side that we have does not have an opposite angle. So the first step is to find out what that opposite angle is and hopefully you worked it out all you have to do is use your knowledge of what the sum of the interior angles of a triangle add up to. And hopefully you remember, that's 180 degrees. So to find the angle here, all you have to do is 180 minus 115 minus 15 to get an angle there of 50 degrees. So let's fill that in. Okay, now I've got this opposite angle. My side is A, my opposite angle is capital A, my other side is B, 
and the angle that is opposite is capital B. So, putting it into my formula, I get x over sine 50 is equal to 20.8 over sine 15. So to get x by itself, all I'm going to do is multiply up by sine 50. So sine 15 times by sine 50 to get me an x of 61.56 centimeters. Okay, so that's how you use the sine rule to find an unknown length of a side. Now we're going to have a look at how we can use a sine rule to find an unknown angle. When it comes to finding an unknown angle, I like to flip the sine rule upside down. So no longer am I doing a over sine a equals b over sine b. All I'm going to do is flip it upside down to get sine a over a equals sine b over b. This is purely just to make my unknown be on top, which means a little less rearranging when it comes to that stage. So, again, first things first, always label your sides and always label your angles. So my unknown angle, I'm going to call capital A, the side opposite lowercase. My other angle, capital B, side opposite lowercase b. And then put it into the formula. So sine x over 5 is equal to sine 75 over 13.2. Again, we'll try to get x by itself. So the first step is to get rid of this divide by 5 by multiplying by 5. So sine x is equal to sine 75 over 13.2 times 5. But x is not by itself yet. At the moment, we have sine x. So now we need to get rid of the sine part of this. So to get rid of sine, what are we going to do? Inverse sine. So x is equal to the inverse sine of sine 75 over 13.2 multiplied by 5, which gives you an answer of 21.5 degrees. Do you think you got it? Have a go at this question to test yourself out. Just pause the video and we'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you've had a good go at this. So let's label up our diagram. Capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b. Remember, angles are capitals, sides are lowercase. Now use your formula. Sine A over A. Sine X over 13 is equal to sine 64 over 12. Now to rearrange this to find X. So sine X is equal to sine 64 over 12 multiplied by 13 and to get x by itself I need to do the inverse of sine so inverse sine sine 64 over 12 multiplied by 13 get me an answer of 76.8 degrees don't forget your units number four have a go at this question Pause the video and see if you can do it. Like with question two, this triangle here takes a bit more thinking. The angle we want to find does not have an opposite side. So let's have a look at what information we do have. We've got this side with an angle opposite, and we've got this side with an unknown angle opposite. I can use the sine rule to find the angle here which will allow me then to use the angles in a triangle to find angle x. So, let's do that. So, let's call this y for now. I want to find out y. So, that is my unknown angle. The side opposite, lowercase a. This is my other angle, sine opposite, lowercase b. So, sine y over 12 is equal to sine 13 over 16. Rearrange to find y. So sine 
y is sine 13 over 16 multiplied by 12. Get y by itself, I'm going to do inverse sine. So inverse sine, sine 13 over 16 times 12 to give me an angle of y as 9.7 degrees. But I don't want to find the size of angle y, I want to find the size of angle x. So I'm going to now put this with my knowledge of angles in a triangle. So x is equal to 180 minus 13 minus 9.7 to give me an angle of 157.3 degrees. Okay, that was quite hard. Hopefully you now understand the sign rule from this brief tutorial. Good luck, and I'll see you again soon.